Bid you all welcome here this evening where we are gathered on the 20th anniversary of the death of Commandant General Tom McGuire, leader of the South Mayo Brigade in the Black and Tan War, and the leader of the longest ambush fought in the War of Independence against the Black and Tans in that period. A man who remained loyal to the Republican cause that he gave his promise to as a young man right up until he died at the age of 102. So we get straight into the business and I call on Sean Lynch from North Longford to say the second of the rosary tonight. Uh, we have come here every year to honour his memory and also to honour the me memory of his wife Christina whose brother was killed in the Tormy Katie ambush. And without further ado, we have a man here that needs no introduction to you to deliver the oration and I'm privileged to call on the only Republican Sinn Féin councillor in the whole of Ireland, Tomás O'Curran, to deliver the oration. Tomás O'Curran. 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 Fulvliens, <laughs> As we do now, we make plenary as medical. As we do now, we make plenary as medical. 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 We make plenary Nor a dimmer, dini, er a table. Nor a scotchet, the Galasha, a Dahuja line, Shaitan Gilish. A Gosokshan unsprout, Gunadina, the Lan of the Lai, which in law a town you want, a Slainty Father Macron. Great Goro, who should be on the noise, Fair I was fair Rogan Moore again he. Fair report of Sandora Dahl Aaron. A bunny of and Kate Dahl and Ejax and Ejax. I was a bishop of souls and Ejax Fissadol, nor a bunny of Untierstad. Untierstad Kena, a time you knew. I was a stress, the shake on their feet, they got it. Friends and Republicans, Chairman, it's an honor for me to be asked to speak here tonight on this very, very hollow spot where the greatest of our heroes is buried. A man who never compromised, a man who never would, a man who was a leader. A man who was an inspiration to all people. A man who was an inspiration to older Republicans than me, who have since gone. And I understand when he walked into a house and he told them the gospel and gave them his blessing. That that was what was to carry on until the last English soldier and the last emblem of British rule in Ireland is gone forever 
from this country. There shall never be any peace in Ireland, be it short or long term, until the cause of the troubles go. And the cause of the troubles is the occupation of our six northeastern counties who are still under British rule today. And you'll get many of these people that will tell you that everything is normal now. Some people will tell you that the way to do it is through the institutions in Dublin, Linster House, Westminster, Stormont and Washington. There's only one way to do it. And Tom knew that way. And that was the only way is to get rid of British rule in Ireland for once and for all. And we'd ask them again, as we've repeated many times, to gather their gear and get the hell out of our country. Because there can never be normalization between Ireland and England until we are free of their shackles. And we are not free of their shackles. Tom, Commandant General Tom and his wife Christina were always, I understand, true and faithful. And Tom, like many more, probably got the inspiration down the years, going back, I suppose, to the time of the United Irishmen, to the Young Irelanders, the Fenians, and the Sixteen Rising, which started all off. And then, when came the Black and Tans, he was out, as your chairman says, to stand up against one of the longest battles in Toomey Cady in that era. I just wonder today and thinking, and thinking of the people like Tom who put their lives on their line, and his comrade who died, Michael O'Brien. And I'm thinking of other people who have since died in battles, as the chairman mentioned with O'Neill in Belfast, and Dan McAnallen and others. And of course, the people who were ambushed in Lockall were they sacrificed? Were they sacrificed for what? These crowds that have gone into Linster House today and accepted the Dublin government's ruling and have accepted British rule in Ireland. And worse still, of all the people that ever went their way, Right down through the splits from 1922 onwards. And again in 26 with the De Valeris. And again in 46 with the McBride. And the Stickies in 69. And in 86 under McGuinness and Adams. I just wonder was all the people that was allowed to die, both in Long Cash and in other places where they sacrificed just so that these could go in and take the Queen's children in Linster House and Storm. Because no one ever, ever went with the enemy until our former comrades went. They went their own separate ways. They formed their own free state parties. But no one went with the enemy. And it, it, it calls many, many people who are aware when Mr. McGuinness shook hands with the Queen of England. Fair enough. We'll shake hands with anybody as an individual or as a visitor, but not while they occupy our country. And the Dublin government bringing the Queen of England down to the Garden of Remembrance to lay a reed by the Commander in Chief of the British Crown Forces, which is on the graves of the Patriot Irish who were forces killed. There's something amiss. And there's something amiss with the people that allowed her in there. If Tom was here today, and if he seen how this so-called free state has gone, 
mass immigration of our youth, the live register dropping according to those Shonies who never knows anything but tell lies. Well, all the airports, Dublin and Shannon, and every airport in Faraway, Australia and Canada are full of our youth immigrating every day. And I thought, as somebody who immigrated myself, I didn't think that the day would come when the young Irish people would be forced to leave their own country. With all our resources sold out, our land made unviable, so viable that the youth will have no longer interest in it. Our seas sold down the drain. Two research ships in the docks in Galway. Yes, not a trawler to be seen landing there. Where are we gone in so many short, short years? And on the spot that we are tonight, I'd like to mention that many people have gone since we were here last year. But I'd like to mention in particular a stalwart of republicanism who was of the same caliber as Tom. And that's Rory O'Brien who died and his once my mass is tom tomorrow night. I'd like to remember people to remember Rory tonight because he was always here. On a more personal note, I would like to mention this man that was buried here last October and who used to be here every year. An old friend of mine from our young days in London. And we went to London in them years. We had a choice. We could have stayed at home. But the people had no choice today. And yes, if you speak up at a county council meeting and you ask where is the money that is for, for social housing, our roads, and are the banks still being propped up and that money going, that should be going towards the ordinary people. Higher taxes, less employment, and very, very, very skimpy money for the youth to live on. That wouldn't be the kind of life, or that wouldn't be the kind of ruling that Tom McGuire ever set out to do. I suppose we were England's first colony, and we are probably going to be our last. They very little left to us, very little of their golden empire that that sun supposedly never went down on. We've seen a few weeks, or last week, there was a program about Margaret Thatcher and the Falkland Islands. The six counties even showed when Charlie High went over and gave her a silver teapot. And our people died with the hunger in the, in the hedge blocks of Blancash. And that's the bare fact too. These things happen. There's no use trying to put it in under the carpet. They have nothing left. Only the Falklands and Gibraltar, six counties, Dile Man and Cornwall. And the Cornish people who never recognised themselves as England, but they are Celts like ourselves down there in the southeast of that country. And it's funny that down through the years when the Berlin Wall came down, they applauded it. They applauded when Nelson Mandela stood with by his principles and done 26 years in jail in South Africa and became the first president of that country after holding out for so long. But not one word about the freedom of our country. By the Americans or any of the superpowers in the world. Why, I cannot understand. What's making it viable for England to stay there? 
What's keeping them there? I don't know. But let's tell you from this spot, until all the Irish people are together as a unit, and Dublin and, well, and Dublin and Stormont are disbanded, and we have an All-Ireland Parliament, just like this man was part of, from 1919 until 22, to lie George broke it up. We will never, ever have peace in Ireland. We may have short-term pieces, but history has it that every year since the great first uprising by the Presbyterians of 1798, there was a lull, but they always came back. We might see, there are kids here tonight that probably will see, and until that day comes, we will stand up against English rule in Ireland why there's a breath in us for me to mark it. Thank you, Tom, for that fine oration. And it's just that there isn't much more to say except that we are coming here for the last 20 years. And in that space of time, every year, Rory O'Brothy was here and he even spoke here. And uh, tonight, we remember him along with Tom McGuire, and we remember him tomorrow night in Roscommon at his month's mind mass. Many years ago, I was with Rory O'Brothy in Sean McGuire's house, making a presentation to Tom McGuire when, on his 100th birthday. And the photograph of that is in the book written about from Jigshop. And we come here every year, and it's just a reminder to all the people that are gathered here tonight. In 1938, Commandant General Tom McGuire handed over the powers of this to the Army Council of the IRA to carry on the struggle for independence. That was rededicated by him again in 1970. And in a room in South Mayo, in a big house that we won't mention any names, there was a General Army Convention. And on a Sunday morning at that convention, at six o'clock in the morning, I was very privileged and honored to be there when Tom McGuire walked into that room and inspected the Guard of Honor of volunteers of the Irish Republican Army who had gathered from all of the 32 counties to carry on a struggle for Irish independence. A continuation of the struggle that went on for 800 years. And he put his blessing on our banner there that morning. And Rory O'Brody was there along with him. But today, as we, this evening, as we stand here, we really dedicate ourselves to the cause for which those men dedicated their lives. And I was very, very saddened, but not surprised, a few short weeks ago in Castle Bar, where over 2,000 so-called Republicans gathered at the Sinn Féin or the people who had stolen the name of Sinn Féin. And a man got up at that Ardesh, a man that I was in prison with, in 1970, a man called Martin McGuinness, who was now first lieutenant to the Queen of England, and he said at that convention, where were all these people when there was a war on? He says, the war is over. Well, I can tell you people here tonight, the war is never over until the last British soldier has departed our shores. And if we don't... If we don't liberate our country, there's going to come a greater generation of young Irishmen after us who will do that. And on that note, I leave you here tonight to rededicate ourselves to the cause for which Commandant General Tom McGuire gave his life and to say, we will not give in until the last British shoulder has departed our shores. On public the boat, got a meal of mine. We'll have the national anthem now. Thank you.
And also to tell you that there'll be refreshments in the pub down the road afterwards. You're all welcome down there.